Okay, so how is everyone today? Okay, so last time we were talking about uh, rational functions. We're still talking about rational functions. Uh, today's the 10th. Isn't that rational? I'm sorry? Isn't that irrational? <laughs> irrational. <laughs> to be doing the same thing twice. Okay, I'll go with that. Uh, so, uh, we, we talked about uh, horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Now let's have uh, another example. So, for example, uh, consider h of x is 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. Okay. So, what we want to do is we want to look at um, the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of, of this function. And in the first place, I'm going to ask, uh, what is the domain of h of x? Everything except 2. So negative infinity to 2, union 2, to infinity. Okay. So now we want to figure out uh, how does this how does this function look? So let's let's make a sketch of y is h of x. So to that end, uh, we're going to perform some Algebra, algebraic manipulations on, on H. So specifically, I want you to divide 3x plus 5 by x minus 2. And what I mean by that is compute the quotient and remainder of, uh, of that division. So we can use Horner's method, synthetic division. Who's guarding the door? Two, and then what are the coefficients? Three, three and five. Okay, so then the three comes down, and then multiply, add. Pretty little uh, division table there. Um, as a result, that means that we can write three uh, x plus 5 is equal to what? Yeah, x minus 2 times what? Well, it's the dividend is the divisor multiplied by what? The quotient, what's the quotient? 3, and then plus the remainder. So in your head, is, is that right? So 3x minus 6 plus 11, is that? Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, we want, we want h of x. So notice that h of x is, is this right here. It's 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. And here we have 3x plus 5. So we could make the left-hand side h of x by doing what? Divide by x minus 2. So 3x plus 5 over x minus 2 is x minus 2 times 3 plus 11 over x minus 2. And then if we, uh, if we divide this, this would be uh, h of x is. And then if we divide this into the first term, what do we get? Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll cancel. But then we're left with a 3. And then plus 11 over x minus 2. 
So now let's have a look at this. Um, what, what function that you already know is quite similar to this one? So let's ignore the plus. Yes, you have a question? OK, so if we ignore the plus 3 for a minute, then this, this is 11 over x minus 2. What is that? What function is like that, the one that you know? 1 over x. It's like 1 over x. So uh, 1 over x, as an aside, looks like this. So this is if it was exactly 1 over x. But we played around with it. What effect does, does changing, so ignore the 3 for a minute, what effect does changing the x to x minus 2 do? Mm -hmm. So that's a, this causes it, causes the plot to move right to. Uh, what, is, what is this going to cause, changing that 1 to an 11? What will that what will that do to the plot? It's not it's not going to be a shift because because if we had to, you know, it's it it would be like multiplying this by eleven. So it's not going to be a shift. It'll be a scale. It'll be a scale. So this will be a vertical scale uh, of. 11, so, so things are 11 times taller than before. Uh, and then what does this do, this thing that I was covering up until now? Oh, yes, a vertical shift of 3. OK. <clears throat> so, so what I mean is up, up 3. Uh, well, that means we can make a sketch. So 1 over x has a vertical asymptote right there. So this, this h of x will also have a vertical asymptote. Where will it be? At 2. So I'll deal with that in a moment. And then 1 over x has a horizontal uh, asymptote. It's right here. Where's, where's the new one going to be? Up 3. Then otherwise, it, it's quite similar to the to the reciprocal graph that you already know and love. Okay. Any question about this? Okay. So this text page is a nice little trick to to. Uh, figure out the horizontal asymptote of a rational function, if any. So suppose that uh, we are given rational function n of x over d of x. Why those names, by the way? Yeah, <laughs> numerator and denominator. Okay. So um, whether or not there's a vertical, uh, sorry, whether or not there's a horizontal asymptote uh, and what the, what the value of the horizontal asymptote is depends on the degrees of, of n and d. So one possibility is that the degree of n of x 
could be less than the degree of d of x. So that is to say it could be something like degree 13 over degree 14. An example like that. In, in this case, there is a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 0. Okay, uh, another possibility. The degree of n could be the same as the degree of d. In this case, there is a horizontal asymptote of y equal to, uh, now I'm just going to write uh, in, in, in English, but I think you'll, you'll take my meaning, the leading coefficient of n of x divided by the leading coefficient of d of x. So in fact, this is what happened on the, on the previous page, because have a look at this h of x. What is the degree of the, of the numerator? One. What is the degree of the denominator? also 1. So, so they have the same degree. So then that means that there is a horizontal asymptote and it's the ratio of the leading coefficients. What is the leading coefficient of the, of the numerator? 3. And the leading coefficient of the denominator? 1. one. So 3 over 1. Did that, did, that, did that turn out to be the case? It did. Okay. The last possibility Uh, what is the last logical possibility? Yes. So in this case, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, and then the <laughs> this is, this is, Believe it or not, all over all over YouTube, uh, with the following name. So if you type this into Google or YouTube, you'll get you know lots of hits. Believe it or not. Uh, so just just briefly, uh, the, the, in the first place, this is pronounced Bobo Botten eats DC. Okay, that's nice. Uh, well, this, this letter O is actually a zero. So I'm going to put a little slash through it. Uh, what it stands for, it stands for bigger on bottom than you get zero. Yeah, Because the denominator is on the bottom. So if it's bigger on bottom than you get a zero, what, what do you think this one means? Bigger on top then there's no horizontal asymptote. And then this one, this one is terrible. I, 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 by the way, I didn't make this up. I just want to clarify. Uh, this uh, exponents are the same, then you divide the coefficients. And really, that, there should be an L here, right? Because you've got to divide the leading coefficients. OK. <laughs> We'll go with that. Fine. So, for example, uh, here's, a, here's a function. g of x is, uh, say, 7x squared plus 5x uh, minus 4 over, um, how about, 2x plus 9. And I, I want to know about its horizontal asymptotes. So please tell me about its horizontal asymptotes. So which case are we in? Bigger on top. So as a result, what? 
no horizontal asymptote. Uh, I'd like for you also to observe, uh, so, so I agree with that, um, but I'd like for you to also observe the numerator is degree two and the denominator is degree one. So if we write both of them as if they were degree two, so that it looks like this, 7x squared plus 5x minus 4. And then how many x squareds are in the denominator? How many x squareds are in the denominator? None. All right, so 0x squared plus 2x plus 9. And then have a look at this right here. Is that a number? 7 over 0? No. It's not. So there's no horizontal asymptote. Okay, how about, uh, how about h of x is, um, uh, I don't know, 5x squared plus 4x plus 9 over 2x squared uh, plus uh, 6x cubed plus 8. So which one are we in? This one? Right. But wait a minute, why, are, why is it not 5 over 2? Ah, oh, right, I tried to sneak that one in there right? so, that I, so that I might temporarily confuse you. Uh, right, so, so the denominator has degree 3, and the numerator has degree 2. So uh, this is the Bobo case, if you like. But if we were to write them, <laughs> if we were to write them both as degree three, and we were to write the terms in decreasing order of degree, then the denominator could be written as six x cubed plus two x squared plus zero x's plus eight. And then how many cubes are in the numerator? None. So that'd be 0x cubed plus 4. Uh, no. <clears throat> plus 5x squared plus 4x plus 9. And then look at this ratio. So is 0 divided by 6 a number? Yes. yes. What is it? Zero. <laughs> so the horizontal asymptote is y is zero. So seven divided by zero, that's not a number. So there is no horizontal asymptote. Whereas zero divided by six, well, that's zero. So the horizontal asymptote is, is uh, zero. And then how about i of x is equal to uh, 13x plus 5 divided by 14x minus 8. Uh, which case are we in? HDC, right? They're both 1, so we, I don't need to play this, <coughs> this 0 game. And then just look at this. So is there a horizontal asymptote? Yes, what is it? 13 over 14. Any question about uh, about this? Okay. <clears throat> so now, let's briefly consider a very simple rational function. How about uh, here? Here's here's one very simple function, and here is another function that is simple but less so. So I think I've asked this question before. Are these two functions the same function? No. no, they're not. Why are they not the same function? Well, in order, in order for functions to be the same, uh, what, what's the first requirement about them? Their domains must be the same. Their domains must be the same. So what's the domain of f? 
all reals. Whereas, what's the domain of G? All reals except zero, right? So F, for F, is permissible to input zero, but for G it is not. Okay. So if we were to plot G of X, if we were to have a look at it, uh, if we were to plot G of X, then uh, away from zero, say like at 10, we'd get 10 over 10. And what's that? That's one. And then maybe on the other side, way over here at negative uh, 20, we'd get negative 20 divided by negative 20. That's one. So then the way you visually indicate this is that, well, it's always one except for right there where you, you don't get anything. And visually that feature is called a hole. Okay, so now we're gonna we're going to talk about this. So let's consider something um, slightly more complicated. How about uh, p of x is x minus one divided by x squared uh, minus seven uh, x plus six. So my first question is please tell me the domain of p of x. Okay, well how do we go about doing that? Yeah, it would be good to factor p of x as much as possible. Because in the end, the only thing that could go wrong when you're trying to compute its domain is if you were dividing by zero. That's the only thing that could, could go wrong. So we need to know where the denominator is zero, and to that end, we need to factor the denominator. So how does the denominator factor? Very good. Now what? Okay, good. So can you cancel? No? You cannot? <laughs> at least at least not not just willy nilly, right? Because what would you get if you canceled this? You get one. But if you did that, that would be like filling in that hole. So you, you can't just you can't just do that. Okay, so now what I'm telling you is that uh, I know that you've been psychologically conditioned to cancel these, uh, <laughs> and now we're going to have to fight that just a little bit, and specifically what, what you're going to have to do is carefully keep track of what the domain is. So this is saying that the domain is negative infinity to 1, union 1 to 6, union 6 to infinity, which is just a complicated way to say anything but one or six. And if we, if we were to go ahead and cancel, what would we get? One over x minus six. Now, I'd like for you to, lo to look at this, and it, if you went ahead and canceled before you made that consideration and you looked at this and asked, and, and then asked yourself, what is the domain of this expression? Well, what is the domain of this expression? Right, anything but six. In, pr in particular, you could plug in one to this one, but not to that one. So what, when you make that cancellation, what you really mean is that, is that you can use this expression, but only on this domain. So all, all the time before, when you, were, when you were canceling things out on the playground and things like that. <laughs> Your teacher wasn't telling you that, ah, you must also keep track of the, of the domain. Very good. So, 
Now let's make a sketch. Uh, let's make a sketch, so two. Um, so does, does, does this have a horizontal asymptote? Remember the Bobo Button thing, previous page. Okay, I hear a yes. Why yes? Well, what's the degree of the numerator? Zero. What's the degree of the denominator? One. So which one is this? Bigger on bottom, right? This one is Bobo. So, it, so is there is there a horizontal asymptote? No. Yes, <laughs> there is one. Bottom is the one that there is that there is none. Uh, so, what is the horizontal asymptote? Zero. Zero. Very good. Okay, fine. So, so we have a horizontal asymptote of zero. Uh, is there a vertical asymptote? So what is this what is this function like? Well, it's similar to when I was asking what this one's like, isn't it? So, you know, they look pretty similar to me. So this one's going to be like the reciprocal function, except how will it be different? Ah, two? Not there won't be two. There's a horizontal shift of six, yes. So over here at six, something's happening. That's gonna be where the where the vertical asymptote is. But remember, we also said that one is not part of the domain. So I'll go ahead and put a mark here for that too. Because what's going to happen, it's going to be just like the reciprocal function over here. But then over here, what it's going to do is it's going to be just like the reciprocal function, except when we come to 1, that's a whole. Ah, interesting. So what I want you to see is that any time that, any time that you have a rational function uh, and you have a zero in the denominator, something interesting happens. And the, the interesting thing is going to be either a, a vertical asymptote, like this one, or it's going to be like a hole, like this one. So you're going to get one of those two uh, scenarios either a vertical asymptote or a hole. And now that I've told you that for rational functions, zeros in the denominator are those two things, I need to explain to you how to figure out which one it's going to be. Okay. So how about uh, this? So x minus 1 to exponent 2, and then this will be over x minus 1 to exponent 4. How about that? And then x minus 3 to exponent uh, 7 divided by x minus 3 to exponent uh, 4. What else do we need here? Uh, x minus uh, 8. And then how about over x minus 9 squared? OK. So first request is please find the domain of q of x. One, 
Everything except those, right? Yes, So negative infinity to 1, 1 to 3, 3 to 9, 9 to infinity. So any question about that? So yes? OK, let's, let's address that. Why am I not writing 8? I mean, I, I, I agree entirely that there's an 8 there. I mean, we're not, uh, you know, that, that's not a hallucination. It's there. Yet, uh, I am saying that it, that it has nothing to do with the domain. Now, why not? Well, with a rational function, ratio of two polynomials, what what can cause what what can cause a point to be have to be removed from the domain there's only one thing that can cause it <coughs> what's and what's this thing nobody it's friday so, when the denominator is zero, right? A division by zero. This is the only problem that could occur. So, can we agree that at one, because of that factor, there's a division by zero? Also at three, because of that factor, there's a division by zero. Also at nine, because of that factor, there's a division by zero. A division by zero. So, why is there not a problem at x is eight? Because it's in the numerator. That's, a, that's not a division by zero. That's a multiplication by zero. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Good. Other questions? OK. So two. Uh, let's find the holes. and vertical asymptotes. So w w what values are candidates for holes and vertical asymptotes? One, three, and nine. That's the only ones that could be that way. So let's address them one at a time. Okay. So now, <clears throat> Uh, I'd like for you to consider that if you were, if you, if you lived, if you were a creature, and you, uh, a one-dimensional creature, and you lived on the, the plot of Q of X, then let, let's imagine that you're really, really small, so that um, if you're close to one, that's, that's like half the world away from three and nine. So it's just really, really far away. Uh, let, let's consider that to be the case, and, and in that... Um, in, in that vein, I'm just going to write the part of the expression that deals with it. So now we know that we know that we can't um, we can't cancel, or at least we have to cancel with care, uh, because if you don't cancel with care, then you could lose track of domain issues. But let's go ahead and cancel. If we were to cancel, what what, what would we have? Very good. So now, what I want you to see is that as a result of that cancellation, uh, there are some x minus 1s left over in the denominator. There's some left over there. There's, there was not enough in the numerator to cancel all, the one, all, of, all of these things in the denominator away. As a result, as a result what, what is this going to be? Is this going to be a hole or a vertical asymptote? If you were to look at the plot of this, what would you see at one? Would you see a hole or would you see a vertical asymptote? Yeah. 
you'd see a, you'd see a vertical asymptote, right? This one is a volcano. This one's a volcano shifted to the right one unit. So this is going to be a vertical asymptote. Now, the the exact condition so that you have an so 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 that you have an analytic condition for this. Uh, well, so now I'm fishing for an M word. Uh, notice that where the factor x minus one is concerned, there's two of them uh, in the numerator, and where x minus one is concerned, there's four of them in the denominator. So I'm fishing for an M word that has to do with this. Murder? <laughs> okay, it's not that one. Starts with M. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Nearly. Nearly. What's a word that sounds like that? Multiplicity. Yeah. Multiplicity. Okay, so what's the, what is the multiplicity of 1 in the numerator? 2. And what is the multiplicity of 1 in the denominator? 4. So the exact condition for there to be, for there to be a vertical asymptote is that the multiplicity of 1 in the denominator is greater than the multiplicity of 1 in the numerator. There's more of them down here than up there. You can't cancel them all away. As a result, there's going to be a vertical asymptote. OK, how about, how about at x is 3? What, what will occur? Well, let's do, it, let's do a similar thing. Uh, if again we imagine being a little one-dimensional creature living on the living on the plot of of y is q of x, and we were near three, then this would be like x minus three to exponent seven divided by x minus three to exponent four. And remember, we we can cancel, but we have to do so with care. If we were to do it, if we were to cancel, then what would we have? x minus 3 to what? Three. To exponent 3. So now, do you, do you observe that we were, able to, we were able to cancel away all of the factors that were in the denominator? We were able to get rid of all of them. But, but, that doesn't magically erase the catastrophe that was happen happening at 3. So, what is it? It's a whole. So the, the exact condition for this, so, so this is the condition, this thing. Is the condition to be a vertical asymptote. The negation of that is the condition to be a whole, which is to say the multiplicity of 3 in the denominator is less or equal to the multiplicity of 3 in the numerator. OK. The last one, x is 9. Okay, so what is it going to be without, without all of this uh, consideration? What will it be? So is it going to be a whole or a vertical asymptote? A vertical asymptote. Why will it be a vertical asymptote? Mm -hmm. 
reasons. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for, as a matter of counting, I could, I could ask, well, what is the multiplicity of 9 in the denominator? It's 2. Its multiplicity is 2. What is the multiplicity of 9 in the numerator? 0. So, well, when, if you can think of it like, well, when I'm all done canceling, there's still two of them in the denominator. Can't get rid of those two. So, as a result, it must be a vertical asymptote. Good. Uh, well, as for the other thing, I could, I could ask about the zeros. Well, the candidates for zeros are 1, 3, and 8. Those candidates. I don't mean that they are, I mean that they're candidates. So how about 1? Is it a 0? Is it a 0? No. Why is it not a 0? Yet we already established that it's a vertical asymptote. The answer is no, because we already established it was a vertical asymptote. How about x equal to 3? Is it a 0? No, because we already established that it was a whole. How about x is 8? Is it a 0? Yes. It is. Good. Any question about this? So determining whether or not something is a whole or uh, an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, is a matter of counting. It's a, it's a counting of, of multiplicities. There's more of these down here than up there, vertical asymptote. More of these up than down, it's a whole. Good. Any questions about that, uh, that concept? Okay, so the last thing for today we're going to think about over the weekend is the following. So we're in chapter 6. And we're in section 6.1 called something like exponentials. Okay, so here's a friendly public service announcement. Anytime that you hear uh, someone on the news media or on Facebook or, or, or anything like that, if they use the adjective exponentially, then they are almost certainly incorrect uh, from a mathematical point of view. From, from, a, from a like metaphorical point of view, I, I make no comment because that's not my area, uh, but, but from, a, from a technical point of view, they're almost surely wrong. Uh, so. I'd like for us to go through a, a brief thought experiment. Imagine that you have an apartment that I desperately would like to rent. Uh, I offer you two uh, options. I, and I only need it for a year. So I'll agree to pay um, one million dollars a week for, for the 52 weeks, or I'll agree to paying you one penny for the first week, and then two pennies for the second week, and then four pennies, and then eight pennies, and then 16 pennies. I'll double the number of pennies each, each week. Mm. So which one would you like? I said one. Okay, well, let, let, let's check, right? So first, in the first week, I would give you, I, I'd pay you a penny. And then in the second week, uh, two pennies. In the third week, four pennies. In the fourth week, uh, eight pennies. In the fifth week, 16 pennies. So what I want you to observe from this is that the pattern is that that is 2 to exponent 0, one less than that. And that's 2 to exponent 1. 2 to 1 is 2. And then 2 to exponent 2 is 4. 2 to exponent 3 is 8. 2 to exponent 4 is 16. So can, can we agree with that? Okay, so then continuing, 6, 30, uh, 32, 7, 64, 8, 
128. And that's pennies, right? Finally broke a dollar. But this one right here is 2 to 7. So let's skip ahead just a little bit. Let's skip down to week 33. What would I need to type into my calculator to get that? 2 to 32, right? Because it's one less. 2 to exponent 32. So that's going to be probably several thousand pennies, right? Yeah. Okay, it's going to be 4294967296. That's pennies. I'll put the decimal point there and then comma, comma. That's 40, almost 43 million for that, for, for 33. Okay, let's go to the end, to week 52. Uh, I'd have to do two to what exponent? Two to 51, right? So let's type that, let, let, let's write that out. That would be two, two, five, one, seven, nine, nine, eight, one, four, and then my calculator ran out of digits, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll need six, I'll just, I need six more places, I'll round them all down to zero. This is the number of pennies. So let's check that. The decimal place, group, 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 group. That's $22.5 trillion. Yeah. So I start out paying you one penny, and then two pennies, and then four pennies, and then eventually um, it, it comes down to a great many pennies, doesn't it? This, this is what, what exponential is. So this concludes the public service announcement of why, <laughs> why when you hear someone say exponential, they're almost surely technically not correct. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion uh, next time.